So Robbie, what's on your radar? More than a dozen mainstream media organizations published reports Monday on the so-called Facebook Papers, a trove of internal company documents obtained and released by former Facebook employee Francis Haugen, the whistleblower. The headlines promised dramatic revelations and damning indictments. Quote, insiders say Facebook CEO chose growth over safety, reports the Washington Post. For Axios, the Facebook Papers paint the social media company as, quote, a brutish corporate actor that prioritizes its business over safety. Bloomberg News tweets that the documents provide, quote, rare, vivid insight into ways Facebook has faltered in its mission. The gap between those sensational claims and what actually appears in the articles is stark. Actually, if this is the best the New York Times, the Associated Press, etc. could do, then the Facebook papers are, well, a nothing burger. As when Haugen first came forward, providing information that formed the basis of a series of Wall Street Journal reports, the real takeaway is that Facebook has been struggling to attract the young users it wants, faces robust competition, and generates apoplectic denunciation from mainstream journalists, mostly because they resent the social media giant for shaking up the news industry. Indeed, the lionization of Francis Haugen by the mainstream media makes it clear this is the case. They are salivating over Haugen because she gives voice to the media concern that Facebook is not censoring enough content. She is validating their exact priors. One of the consequences of how Facebook is picking out that content today is it is optimizing for content that gets engagement or reaction. But its own research is showing that content that is hateful, that is divisive, that is polarizing, it's easier to inspire people to anger than it is to other emotions. Misinformation, angry content yeah. is enticing to people and keep, enticing. keeps them on the platform. Yes. Facebook has realized that if they change the algorithm to be safer, People will spend less time on the site, they'll click on less ads, they'll make less money. There are, to be clear, some decent reasons in here to criticize Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg. The Washington Post reports that he was intimately involved with the company's decision to comply with the Vietnamese government's demand for greater censorship of political dissidents. Though even then, it's debatable what Zuckerberg should do when authoritarian governments demand content moderation. Should Facebook pull out of Vietnam, depriving the country of the site entirely? Is a censored version of Facebook worse than no Facebook at all? Note as well that bowing to the Vietnamese government's demand for greater censorship is being treated as a bad thing by some of the same outlets that are shaming Facebook for not bowing to the U.S. government's request for greater censorship. The site's failure to take down extremism, hate speech, and misinformation related to the U.S. presidential elections and the COVID-19 pandemic is considered a grave moral failing. U.S. senators scream at Facebook for doing the bidding of other governments while engaged in the very act of trying to compel the Facebook to do the bidding of the U.S. Senate. That's the central idea behind the mainstream media's framing of the Facebook papers. The social media site is unsafe because there's too much content that the mainstream media and the government would prefer users not to see. They're upset that the person in charge of deciding what belongs on Facebook is Mark Zuckerberg and not Joe Biden. And no amount of hand-wringing about addictive platforms or monopolistic practices can disguise the fact that the site is losing popularity with young people, its cultural, social, and political relevance is weakening, but it's still letting people discuss things that the media doesn't want you to hear, and so they'll be treating it like an existential threat to planet Earth right up until the day it collapses. So, like, I'm seeing all these headlines. There was just another one. Uh, Washington Post, yeah, Facebook, five points for anger, one for like, how Facebook's formula fosters rage and misinformation. There's all these dramatic, colorful language to describe what's coming out of these papers. And then I'm reading the actual stories, and it's like, well, we already know all of this. Yes, sometimes their, their content on social media is too divisive. Sometimes the content in all sorts of mainstream outlet, the content on CNN is too divisive. Right. The content everywhere is too divisive. What do you, like, the obsession with Facebook, it seems like industry, inner industry battle to me. And, that, and like, that's never disclosed or discussed. That these companies just hate Facebook because it's a rival media organization to some extent. They don't like it, how it has broken up their power. And like, of course, they're never going to admit that, but like, that animates so much of their drive. Although we did learn that Facebook knows how to, does know how to censor some content. When, right, it was a Vietnam, Vietnamese yeah, government right. or something right. said, said, hey, well, these dissidents are uh, you know, a little bit hostile to our, our government here. How about you nuke them or whatever? Right, and Zuckerberg um, said, sure. Which, come on, like Zuckerberg, like that, like, you know, he, t he claims to have these principles of, of free speech. Like his, his entire defense 
of what he has created is that he's just giving more information to more people and connecting more people, unless the Vietnamese government tells him not to. Like, what kind of what kind of a principle is that? That you know, you're not willing to like give up the Vietnamese market. Why not call their bluff? What, what, is Vietnam really? Is the Vietnamese government really going to take the backlash from its citizenship? I might. By, I don't know. The, by shutting Facebook down? The Chinese government would, right? Okay. Well, the Chinese government is a bit different than the Vietnamese yeah. government. But if the Viet... Okay, let's say the Chinese government said, uh, all right, we want you to help us tra track down dissidents in China. Like, that wouldn't be okay, right? Absolutely not. But I'm sick... I, look, I'm sick of pretending these are easy decisions. These are obviously not easy decisions. Like, the, uh, of course, in a vacuum, they should not take down any content at the request of the Vietnamese government. I don't think they should take down any content at, at the request yeah. of the U.S. government. But that's the U.S. government's problem. They should stop doing that. The Vietnamese government should stop doing that. The bad yeah. actor is the government. Right, yes. The U.S. government should try, stop trying to censor people yeah. as well. I do think that questions about the algorithm are interesting. And I feel like I'm in a, in a vast minority. That everybody wants to focus this conversation on, on censorship, but I'm glad you brought up the, the algorithm and the anger and the clicks. Yeah. Like, we don't, they don't, we don't, we are, we are a democratic society. If, if we decide that we don't want to be angry all the time, you know, we could regulate Facebook as a public utility, regulate social media as a public utility and say, you can't, you know, study ways to make people angry and then execute your business so that it makes more people angry. As a democratic society, we don't want that. Just like we could say we don't like leaf blowers, loud leaf blowers. Like, we can, we can do that. Right. Like, it's within the realm of what a free people with agency, are, I think, are able to decide about how they want their, their lives to go. Fair enough. But we're hearing from a bunch of people, from our, our, our media, our political class, who are saying, we don't want that leaf blower. That right. leaf blower is yeah. fine. This, blower this one is can be as loud yeah. as you want, but that one is, is bad for society. Yes. I mean, and and yes. it's so hypocritical. Yes, CNN and Fox, uh, MSNBC, they, they stoke anger all the time, obviously. Like, this, that, is, that, is, that is what they do. In, in that recent Facebook book by the New York Times authors, they spend tons of time talking about how Facebook kept spreading the Trump uh, suggesting drinking bleach you know, for COVID thing and that mis it was misinformation. It's like... Hey, I, is anybody really going to drink bleach? Maybe one idiot might, <laughs> right, might have done it. Right. But B, I didn't learn that from Facebook. I learned that from the million wall times to wall mainstream media coverage of this thing. But somehow that's okay. Yeah. Like, why is it okay for them to constantly repeat this thing, but it's not okay for Facebook? Uh, I guess they want Facebook to put a little tag that says "Don't drink bleach." Right. They know. hold this. They hold. Fa they hold social media to a totally different standard, right. and it is often not clear to me. Well, it's clear to me why. It's because they really hate these companies for so, for some right. ideological reasons. But there there is an undercurrent of of actual industry well, clashing. Well, that I don't know when you reported. got. In, I don't know when you got into media, but I was there when, when Facebook defrauded the media. And so I understand why the media. They, they did do that, and they should them. have been sued. For, they were sued right. for that. The the lying about the videos. Yep, I, I have I wrote that in my book. That is the most um, obviously evil thing yeah. Facebook has done and to I, the media, and it was fr and they pay. I think they they paid out. They and, paid us out. Yeah, and I watched as my idiot company at the time uh, <laughs> like laid off a bunch of reporters and hired Huffing a bunch. Of, yeah, yeah, hired a bunch of video people to they they, they like everybody else. They pivoted to video. And there were people with sense who were like, this is dumb. Like, what are you doing? This is probably fraud. Uh, like, it do, these numbers don't make sense. And they were paying, they paid, I forget what they paid the revenue, something like a million dollars a year, some like significant amount of money so that they could then invest in uh, producing video content right. uh, into their fake, like we now know, absolutely fake system that nobody was watching. And it, it gutted the, the journalism, and it never, it never really recovered from what it, from that moment. And that's just that organization. Many others went through the same pivot to video and then fail right. situation. And so, yeah, there's a lot of bitterness, and I think I think some of that bitterness is is being enacted out as revenge in some of this coverage. Yeah. A pivot to video followed by a pivot to dust. Yeah, and followed by a pivot to drive Facebook into dust. <laughs> Next on Rising, Team Rising is here to react to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' new initiative to entice unvaccinated police officers to live in the state. Stay tuned for that.